Hi, I'm Joe James, and in this video, I'm going to explain circular linked lists, and I'm going to show you how to code a circular linked list in Python. So a regular linked list looks like this. We have a root node. Each node has a pointer to the next node and a piece of data, except for the last node, which does not have a next node. That tells us that's the last node. Now a circular linked list, however, the last node in the list has a pointer back to the first node in the list as you can see here, so that we're able to iterate through the list continuously. Why would you want to do that? Well, let's say you're simulating a board game, or for like Monopoly, and you want to continuously iterate around the board. So a circular linked list would enable you to do that. Now if we're just looking for an item in this list, a data value, let's say we're looking for 10, and we can see 10 is not in this list, what would happen is we would iterate through the list looking for 10, we would get to the last node, and instead of continuously circling and being stuck in an endless loop, we want to be able to find the end of the loop, and the way we'll do that is by checking if this node's next node is equal to the root node. Right? So the end node, its next node, is the root node. And when we get to that node, then we know that we're at the end of the list. So using the find operation or remove operation, because that also requires a find, we basically will use that technique to find the end of the list and know that we need to stop. Now let's look at the code for our circular link list. We don't need to change anything at all in the node class. In the circular linked list class, we can leave our constructor and the get size methods the same. We need to make updates to the add, remove, find, and print list functions. So first let's look at the add function. So when adding a node to a normal linked list, we would add it at the very front of the list, the first item. We don't want to do that here because that would require us to iterate through the entire list to change the last node in the list's next pointer to the new first item. So instead what we'll do is we'll insert each new node into the list as the second item in the list. New node, we're going to create the new node using um, the roots next pointer as the new node's next pointer. And then we'll change the roots next to the new node. So that's a minor change to our add function. And then our remove function is a little trickier too. For any node other than the root, to remove it is pretty simple. We just bypass that node by changing the previous node's next pointer to this node's next pointer. But if we want to delete the root node, then we have to iterate using this while loop all the way through the list to get the very last node so that we can change the last node's next pointer to the second node in the list. So here we'll iterate through using the while loop. Uh, we'll get this node will be the last node in the list and then we'll set the last node's next pointer to root's next pointer which is the second node. And that effectively deletes the root node from the list and then we update the root pointer to the second item in the list. That's it for the remove function. Now let's look at the find function. In the find function, we need to make this little update where if we get to the end of the list, we stop. We don't keep looping through continuously. We have this check that if this node.getNext is equal self.root, then we just return false because we didn't find the item we were looking for. And we'll basically do the same thing in the print list function. We have a check in the print list here in this while loop where if this node.getNext is not equal to root, then we'll print, otherwise we're going to exit the while loop. So let me show you the test code. I updated some test codes so that we could see how this works. I basically inserted a for loop here that will print eight items continuously. We only have five items in our circular linked list, but we're going to print eight. So we should be able to print all five items and then start from the beginning again and print the next few items. So that's exactly what happens. We print first five items, and then we get back to the beginning of the list, and we continue printing items. And then when we do our print list function, it just prints the list one time because we check for the end of the list by checking for the root node. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.